Hello and welcome to Floss Tube and Variety Show number 35. I'm Emily Williams from Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and I'm really glad to have you joining me this afternoon. A uh, special welcome to anyone who is checking this out from uh, the Stitchy, the Stitch Inn at St. Mark's Church in Leroy, New York. I know uh, Leslie Deleuze from infancy, and I was a member of, well, I was confirmed in St. Mark's Church, so I guess that makes me a member um, back in my youth, lived in Leroy. Uh, when people ask me, I say that Leroy is my hometown, even though I've lived in North Carolina for over 40 years. Um, so anyway, welcome to you if you uh, saw a mention of my video in your stitching tips sheet that Leslie provided. And I'm going to show you my tiny little start on the same project that you all were working on this morning a little bit later in the video. Anyway, floss tube and variety show. The floss tube part has to do with cross stitch and the variety show has to do with other things. So hopefully you'll find things of interest today. Let me start with cross stitch as um, you know, I was working on this drum up here from this Blackbird Designs pattern, Sweet Summer Come Again. I love the strawberries and so on. I'm not gonna show you that because I'm gonna show you this. This is finished. I'm quite pleased. It was fun to stitch and then I took the plunge and decided to figure out how to actually make it into a drum. This is far from perfect, but it was fun. I have sawdust in here provided by a friend of mine who makes dulcimers and does other woodworking, woodworking. And it's really, I'm pretty pleased with it. Um, so that is was really fun. Very nice to stitch. And I am going to, to stitch this other item in the pattern, which they have finished as a little needle roll, which, or pin roll or something, which I don't think I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna make it into a little pillow because when you have it this way, you can only see one little part of the design at a time, depending on how it's rolled. And there's gonna be a seam down the back of it. And I would rather just have it as a little pin pillow or something like that. But anyway, very fun. I'll also show you the purple sampler that I'm doing using mostly things from this book, Ultimate uh, sampler motif source book by Brenda Keys. Um, here we are. I think I might possibly have had a little portion of the trunk of this tree last time, but here you can see. And there's the beginning of the leaves and the fruit on this tree. Probably the design, I mean, it's very stylized, so it could be any fruit you want, really. Probably if you were to do it in the original colors of the sampler that it originally appeared on, it would have been lemons. But I'm gonna call it a plum tree, don't you think? Um, so it will have leaves and plums all, on, all along it, and then there's space under it and around it to put some other motifs, which I will do. Um, so that will be fun. Now in past videos, I've shown you under the roof of Blue Ionian Weather. I actually have amassed a fair number of things to show you today that in the variety show portion and to talk about. And I have worked on Under the Roof in Blue Ionian Weather. Probably you would be able to detect my progress, but it's still all gray. It will be, you know, all gray. Uh, I think I'd rather wait until another video to show you that. I'm also working on Flea Market Flowers by Lori Holt. And I will show you that some other video too. But I wanted to show you this little pattern called Forest Foxes. And this is um, designed by Stitchy Prin Stitching Princess. And you see it's a little white tree-ish design with little foxes, very cute. And this is the project that the St. Mark's Church Stitch In that I referred to earlier worked on this morning, started this morning. And I decided since I had, I had already purchased the pattern that I would 
make a little start myself. This morning I looked through my stash and found this blue fabric, which I think will work really nicely as the background for it. So there you are. This is 14 count Ada. I do not know the name of the color. I do not know, do not know, donut, donut. Oh, we should have a donut. Sorry, slight insanity there. I do not know where I got this. So can't help you with that, but it is 14 count Ada. And I'm using three strands of the call for DMC for the main three colors. Here they are. You can see the two slightly different shades of fox. We'll call those shades of fox, right? And white. There's also a very dark brown, which is used for a little bit of um, back stitching and their noses, which I'm, I don't see, I happen to have that exact color. And since there are six stitches plus maybe 12 or 15 back stitches in that color, I'm just gonna substitute something else. No one will ever know, except you, you'll know, because I told you the secret. So that's what I've been working on in cross stitch. And so now, Variety Show. And Variety Show, I'm gonna start with cross stitch actually, because if you watch any floss tube, you know that there is a certain amount of, well, if you know anything about the world right now, you know there's a high degree of interest in supporting the Ukrainian people in this current crisis situation of their country being invaded. Um, and it's so interesting that in today's modern world, there actually are real co tangible concrete ways that we individual people can help individual people in Ukraine. And I, in watching some other floss tubes, recognize that one of the ways that I can help individual people in Ukraine is to purchase things from their Etsy shops. In particular, things that are not material items, i.e. PDF downloads. So this little fox, uh, forest foxes chart I purchased through the Stitching Princesses Etsy shop. It's a PDF download. Um, there are a lot of Ukrainian stitchers and stitch cross stitch designers who sell things on Etsy shops. And I set a budget of the amount of money that I would like to get into the hands of individual Ukrainian people and have been browsing through Etsy looking for cross stitch patterns that I like. And I found a lot. Now, interestingly, I can't actually show you most of them because there are no mock-up pictures on most of the PDFs. You know, I, normally I print like I did for, for this one. You know, there's a cover sheet that has a picture, either a photograph of the finished, of a model of the finished piece, or at least an, a mock-up that's made of, you know, graphical, that isn't a chart. It's not the chart to stitch it by, but it's that. So I, I can't show you, sorry. There are ways you can search on Etsy for Ukrainian designers. Um, a lot of people are doing that, so the pathway is actually pretty well trodden to do that. And I have bought charts from three or four different designers. Um, I'll just show you this. This is a chart, but it's so, this chart is um, 330 squares, square. And there's no way you could stitch from this image, so I'm not gonna worry too much about breaking copyright. This is uh, two by two stitch art is the designer. And it's, this is a Ukrainian designer. And I've been browsing through, I'm, you know, this is gorgeous. Isn't that gorgeous? I would think that you might do that and make it into a mat that you would put on a table because 300 stitches, 330 stitches, if you did it at um, on 14 count Ada, it would be 20 inches in diameter. And that would be really nice as a table topper. And of course it's very beautiful, I think. Um, a couple of other shops that I have been browsing are Fireplace Hobby, 
Um, and I, by the way, I've put these in the description box beneath this video so you can see what I've mentioned. And of course, you can go to Etsy and search on your own for things you're interested in. Um, Natalie Alex DIY is another one that I've purchased some things from. And Passion Cross Stitch is a site that I've been browsing and probably will make a purchase from. And I've heard about people being extremely creative about how they are being a, are figuring out ways to directly have an impact on individual people in Ukraine. Um, one of the things I heard about is in areas where there's been a lot of bombing and destruction, they go onto the Airbnb website and find properties that are ostensibly for rent that of course can't be rented now because of the, the war. And they are booking nights in those properties and paying in advance so that the money goes to the, the actual owner. And I think that's very creative. I, I don't think I'm gonna do that, but that's an idea. And there are probably many other ideas, I just haven't come across them, but that is something that's been on my mind is how to directly help. And in this era where everything, the whole world is interconnected through the internet, uh, it's a lot easier than it would have been in previous eras when terrible things like this happen. So, uh, by the way, on, on normal occasions, you will never hear politics mentioned on this channel or even a whole lot about social issues, uh, current event kind of thing. So don't, don't be worried that every time, any of you who are relatively new to the channel, do not think that every time you tune in, you're gonna hear any kind of opinions or whatever about current events because you're just not going to hear it from me on this channel. So no worries, no worries. All are welcome here. Um, another category of things I wanted to talk to you about was some uh, another whole group of items that I purchased at the quilt show. Now my last video, I showed you three quilt patterns that I purchased at the quilt show. And I showed you, or talked about, some yarn. I can't remember if I showed you the yarn, but I talked about some yarn and knitting items. Because when you go to the quilt show, you buy yarn, of course. Well, another thing you buy is applique embroidery patterns. So here are some things I bought. I know, totally crazy, so sorry. You just have to chalk it up to me being crazy. Um, so this is a little felt. This is a wool felt, Penny Lane Primitives, and these are little snowmen, sort of a Christmas winter decoration. I bought this pattern and kit, and when you look through it, you see that there's good instructions, and there's you cut out, and a sort of a diagram of what stitching to use, and that kind of thing. I have made some uh, Christmas ornaments um, in 2020 using wool felt and embroidery and I very much enjoyed it. So that's why I was attracted to that. And because one such thing is not enough, I bought another one. This is um, Bare Roots is the designer. All of this information, the details are in the description box. And these are little ball ornaments that you make and stuff. And if you see it's a kit, it has the what you need, which wool felt is actually kind of hard to come by. Uh, so I felt, I believed, I felt that getting a kit was the way to go with wool felt ideas, proje uh, projects. Another one is, I really am looking forward to doing this. This is um, called With All My Heart. And I do not believe that I would call this a Christmas decoration. I think it's Well, I guess it has holly leaves in it, so maybe it might be Christmas. But this is not wool felt, it's wool, um, woven wool fabric. And again, it's a kit. It doesn't have the thread that you need, at least I don't think so, I haven't taken it out. It's mostly woven wool, there's a little bit of felt, 
that's part of it. But of course the pattern is nice also. And I'm looking forward to doing that. I think it's very pretty. And then finally, this was the thing that was the extravagant thing. This is 22 inches in diameter when it's finished. That cream and gray and black or charcoal gray table mat tulips. And this is designed by Lisa Bonjean, who is a, if you are interested in Lisa Bonjean, I, well, I gave some, you can search for her, you can Google her. She's done a lot of what I would call primitive designs. She likes to use reproduction fabric, which is not really the kind of fabric that I prefer, but her stuff is really interesting. And of course you can make her items using any fabric you like. So she does quilt designs and she does these uh, wool applique designs. This again is uh, woven wool applique. And so those, those flower heads are clearly tulips. The leaves to me look a lot more like poppy leaves, but I'm gonna ignore the incongruity of those leaves with those flowers and just go with it because I saw the, the item finished at the shop and it was quite beautiful. So I'm looking forward to working on that. Let me, I'm gonna just turn my attention for a moment to my notes. Um, yeah, so, the, so I had one more thing, the main thing I wanted to mention, which is, I, so in other videos I've mentioned that I'm interested in Sudoku, and I believe I've mentioned the uh, YouTube channel called Cracking the Cryptic, and my son got me going on that last summer. It's really interesting, if you like Sudoku, it is the channel on YouTube for Sudoku. And the two people who do the channel, Mark Goodliffe and Simon Antony, uh, are in England. They're friends. They um, have been friends a long time. They have competed in world level puzzle and Sudoku and cryptic crossword competitions. And, and they win them. Well, Mark wins them anyway. I don't know about, I haven't, gathered. I don't think Simon wins them, but they're both brilliant and they're very interesting. They do uh, solves of Sudoku puzzles mainly as well as some other kinds of puzzles and they are extremely good at explaining the logic so you can actually learn more about how to go about solving these puzzles. And if you are familiar with Sudoku only from your local paper, you might not realize that there are many variants now of Sudoku, which are not simply a plain nine by nine grid with nine boxes, each containing the digits one to nine. There's other ways that Sudoku works. And usually it is still nine by nine grid, nine boxes, each containing the digits one to nine, but there are other factors in it. And this channel features those variants. Uh, and it's all very, very interesting, I think. Well, I sent them an email having um, tried the World Puzzle Federation Sudoku Grand Prix, suggesting that they try a certain puzzle from the Grand Prix on their channel because it seemed like it was a version of a variant that was a little trickier than the typical one. And last night, they did so. They tried the puzzle I suggested. Mark Goodliffe did. And he mentioned my name and very kindly mentioned my name and that was just thrilling. It was very thrilling. It was almost as thrilling. In fact, so I don't think my son watches these videos. So if you do, Scott, apologies for, for this, but uh, a couple of months ago, uh, there was a very difficult puzzle hunt in the Patreon channel that only, I would guess, 40 people were successful in solving. And they read out the names of everybody who turned in the correct solutions to it on the channel. And Scott was one of those people. And I was thrilled that he was mentioned, his name was mentioned on the channel. So I'm possibly more thrilled that my name was. So anyway, that was pretty fun. I put a link to that particular video in the description box if you wanna hear my name mentioned by this British Sudoku guy. Um, 
it's within the first 45 seconds or so is the main mention of my name. So if you're, but if you're interested at all in variant Sudoku, you could watch the whole video. It's only about 20 minutes altogether. So anyway, a little craziness. That's a little, another one of my interests I give a lot of time and mental energy to. And along with, as you know, so many crafts, cross stitch, quilt making, embroidery, knitting. I'm a little bit crazy, just a, just a bit crazy. Now, another thing I mentioned last week was the drinking game of how many times I use the word so. I think I was a little calmer on that word this time. I don't really know because one of the things about a verbal tick is you don't tend to notice it yourself. Perhaps I said it 50 times and you're now overloaded with caffeine because you drank a sip of tea every time. I don't know, you'll have to mention in, the, in your comment how many times I said it and just how caffeinated you ended up being. Uh, anyway, that's, that's all. That's all for today, actually. That was what I had to talk about. And I hope that you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you are new to this video and you've made it this far, thank you. I try to put a video up weekly. Normally it's been on Fridays. I had a pretty big day yesterday, so I didn't get to it. But if you are interested, which I hope you are, in checking out my future videos, I suggest that you subscribe and click the notification bell so that you will be notified when I do put up a video since it's not absolutely regular. It's not absolutely on a regular schedule. Um, so that's a way you can keep up with that. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that you are having a wonderful day and we'll have a great rest of your weekend for cross stitch or quilt making or embroidery or Sudoku solving or uh, whatever it is that you enjoy doing. And many blessings to you, friends.